assessed as to whether they warranted extra protection from possible loss or development, and I'm grateful that Keith and his team have agreed that they can. Indeed, indeed, these sites can be designated as local green space in the draft plan that is before us this evening. Mr Mayor, I would like to name these sites now so that in the event that property, develop property developers are watching tonight, casting their eyes over our ward, they will know that they are wasting their time. Mr Mayor, the sites that we are looking to have extra protection for are well known to many people. Belvedere playing fields, School Lane playing fields, Ellery Park, Flynn's Peace, Harrison Park that Leslie, Paul and I have already referenced this evening, King's Parade, Wallacher playing fields, Wallacher Oval Cricket Ground, sorry, Wallacey Oval Cricket Ground, and Ditton Lane Nature Reserve in Liso, where in a previous ward I worked with residents to stop it being lost to development, not least because it is on a floodplain. Uh, and above all, Mr Mayor, thanks must go to those residents who have collectively held the feet of their councillors to their fire. And like Councillor Anderson, I thank my best friend, the late Councillor Chris Blakely, for getting this group to be vocal on this issue as only he could. Finally, Mr Mayor, this Conservative Councillor for Wallasey Ward would like to pay particular tribute to Greasby's most well-known socialist, Phil Simpson, for his actions in galvanising people who he knew to get us to this point this evening. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fox. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Mr Mayor. And before I uh, be missing me last time, Paul Martin, a fantastic first speech. Tony, a real uh, heart-wrenching story of Absolutely. your life and how you've been affected. And also congratulations to my Lord colleague, Jill Wood, on the Andy Day Award. Uh, Andy was a very special friend of mine, a, a lovely guy, and it's nice to him to be honoured. And I appreciate Andy Corker being on it again tonight. Right, okay. So we have now got to this point in, in the local plan, and I've spoke to everyone who's been involved in the, in, in the local plan, and one of the things that has made it very difficult to get through is the con constant fluctuation of numbers of houses that are required from the council. Uh, and it's changed numerous times. It, it, when George was trying to motor this through, it was changing by the week, he was telling me, and it was almost impossible. We've now had to work to a formula, which many of us may disagree with, but we work to a formula. But don't be listening to the fact that, you know, Greenbelt's been in, in danger or Greenbelt's been under threat. We have always had applications that have come in the Greenbelt from developers. It's not new. And this latest one, where we see in, on, on, on various leaflets, thousand homes by Leary Hume Estates, that could have come at any time. We've done very well at protecting the green belts under the UDP, and anyone who was around at that time, I'm sure how old I am, I actually sat and helped write the UDP that we worked with, Dave Mitchell, Dave Elkinson. Uh, yeah, we were all together on that. We went painstakingly through the borough, looking at pieces of land and giving them a designation. And it has, by and large, protected the green belt, is completely intact. There have been, and I'm going to quote three, some of them are slightly controversial applications, but the type of applications that we've had may be of interest to people. So we had the Anselm's uh, rugby uh, application, where we sat at the planning committee, we had three ward councillors pleading with us to say, this is a special uh, except, exception, and we want to get a new sports centre, get, and to give up some of the green belts, and the committee made a decision on that. So an exceptional circumstance had to be, has to be proven. The other one is Stoughton Hall. Now the council rejected that. That was in the green belt. We rejected that as a local authority. Yet the inspector came in uh, and made the decision to overturn that decision we made. But you know, and it was based on the grounds of saving an historic building. And the, the other one I can remember, uh, and I remember doing battle with uh, Councillor Blakely, uh, much much missed, was the Breesby, uh, Breesby issue of the fire station. And a special case was made for a fire station. Well, it was made, the first case was made for it to be in Greasby Village on Greenbelt, but people didn't want it there, so they had to find a location. And that, by any stretch of the imagination, the building of a fire station saving lives is an exceptional circumstance. So they're, they're the only three I can think of. That, that, can I finish, please? Uh, can I just...
just say that that is the, 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 they're the exception. But don't forget, this, this plan will not stand up unless the people of Birkenhead seek them and so on, except that their environment is going to change dramatically. The numbers of houses in the regeneration programme are massive, are massive. And if you live in Birkenhead, the poor parts of Birkenhead, you're probably the furthest away from the Green Belt. So don't be telling us, Labour councillors. So I remember sitting with Frank Field and further on with Mick Whitley when this was in, in, in its prospect. That's not an easy sell to tell people that thousands of houses are going Stephen. into Birkenhead and, and into Wallasey. It's not, not an easy sell. And Labour politicians have led the community and have, this, this plan stands up. Now, people want to object to the plan. Steve. Yes, I apologise, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I know it was three council meetings ago, but I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Councillor Martin on his excellent first speech. It was outstanding. Mr. Mayor, I welcome this draft plan and the work undertaken to produce it, particularly over the last three years. And I think we should recognise this is a, now a significant achievement for this council. And I think we need to place on record our thanks to former councillor Anita Leach, former council leader Phil Davis, and councillor Tony Jones, who is current chair of the Economic Regeneration and Development Committee. And I believe we should all thank them and everyone else, including officers, and I notice Alan Evans sitting at the back, uh, as well as all staff 
who've been involved in this exercise. I think we should thank them for all the work they've put in. Um, the examination in public will be a challenge, as will the delivery of the regeneration. I think we can't shy away from that. But Brownfield first and regeneration is now at the heart of this plan. And we must remember, that in order to achieve this, we need to have the right skills in the right places, both on the political side and also on the officerial and staff side. The examination will be tough, so it's not just a question of approving this tonight and thinking that the whole issue has gone away. It's going to be tough. We can't sh shy away from that. But we need to continue to prioritise our regeneration areas, as that is key to the whole delivery. Now, Birkenhead, where I'm proud to be a local councillor, um, is really protecting the green belt, and we should all be as proud of that as I am. We need to support that on a long-term basis, not just for the short term, after we hopefully agree the plan tonight. We all need to put our long-term support behind this plan, and I urge all members tonight to pledge to do that. So, so far as the housing, sorry, the issue of housing numbers is concerned, there is clear evidence that this number is high. But the government method is the one that we've followed, which I believe to be correct. And it's on that basis, Mr Mayor, I'd urge all members of the council tonight to approve this plan. Thank you very much. Yeah, please. Please, people in the audience, please. Thank you. Councillor Bairds, your choice. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I was intending to speak on this one. I was, honestly. And I would also like to point out that uh, my, my congratulations to Councillor Martin, who uh, a man in the corner who is still at the cutting edge of fashion with a three-piece suit. Uh, well done to you. Um, the... Oh, so, sorry, Chris. Sorry, I do apologise. <laughs> Um, I, I genuinely think um, that the people in this room have won the lottery of life. Because not only do we live in this wonderful country, but we live on the will, which never, ever ceases to give me a wonder. If I walk down Hoy Lake Promenade, which I do as a constitutional every day, or if I go to Port Sunlight, which I did uh, over the weekend, it, it never, ever fails to excite me, to make me feel emotional as to how wonderful it is. And never one for a cheap political comment. Um, but but, but um, it is fair to say that the reason why we're here after such, such a long time, waiting for a local plan, which was like the second coming. We, we, we never thought it was going to arrive. And quite frankly, for it to actually arrive today in some format, and I have read it, I have read it from cover to cover, it does give some assurance, and as somebody said in the audience before, this cuts across all politics. We all enjoy what goes on in the Whittle. It is a beautiful place. And to, to say that I'm a NIMBY probably would be correct, because I don't want large swathes of development on the Whittle. I'm an estate agent, I get approached all the time from developers asking what's available to build on because there's lots of money to be made. But I do give some credit to all the people in this room having worked to some extent to come up with a plan that looks like it's workable. The, the, the thing I do uh, disagree with Council Fuchs, so sorry about this, but we're, we're back on the focus. Focus. Um, <laughs> focus is very much around, we do need houses for starter homes. You're not going to get a starter home at £100,000 in Irby. It's not going to happen. So we do need something, and it has to be in the places that have been designated. So I'm not against building of houses, but please can we make sure that we remain vigilant that over the next few years this doesn't slip, it doesn't become something of a memory that only Councillor Gilchrist can remember. That's the thing, <coughs> sorry, you, you do have an amazing memory, um, but quite frankly, I, I do support what we're taking forward and I do promise that however long I'm here, I will try my best to keep an eye on what we're doing and make sure it never ever destroys the Whittle and the beauty therein.
Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. The council house has got social cleansing. Please. I don't want to keep repeating this, but we're here tonight to listen to a debate, not shouting from the audience. Thank you. So the next person to speak is a maiden speech again, Max, Max Booth. Over to you, Max. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, firstly, big congratulations to Councillor Paul Martin for his maiden speech, and also Councillor Cartier, which is a truly heartfelt and impassioned speech, which was really, really brilliant. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have a local plan, a local plan that defends the Greenbelt, a local plan that dispels fears from local residents and a local plan that will protect our Greenbelt for future generations to come. Mr Mayor, the Greenbelt is the crown jewel of this peninsula and comparable to areas with similar demographics, uh, we sometimes take for granted the expansive Greenbelt that we have here. Unfortunately, over the years, decisions and votes have instilled fears that this very Greenbelt um, could be built on. One of the most prominent being the Hoy Lake Golf Resort, as mentioned by some of my colleagues. And just like Hoy Lake, Mr. Mayor, another one of these areas of precious greenbelt that this robust local plan will protect is around Sorgal Massey Conservation Area in my ward. This is characterised not only by the old history of the village, Mr. Mayor, but moreover the greenbelt and green space that flanks all sides. And while I'm sure developers will try their luck in trying to weed themselves in and propose developments on these sites, we cannot allow it, and this local plan will not allow it, because if we lose our green belt, Mr Mayor, we lose the character, history and identity that comes with it. Mr Mayor, I am in further in no doubt that we need more affordable homes, as just mentioned by Councillor Burgess Joyce. And as the local plan outlines, we have the brownfield space along the industrial and urban spines of Wirral to accommodate these new exciting regeneration developments. These developments will provide the hope to many of my generation that not only will these plans come with revitalised skills, but there will be new opportunities to speak, seek a place on the housing ladder. And Mr May, just to finish, I ran my local campaign on a promise to the residents of my ward that I would fight for the protection of the green belt. And not to uh, show my age here, but I wasn't even born when the last local plan was agreed. So I am enthused to vote for this one tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Gilchrist. stressful, cause a lot of anxiety in the build up to it, but both your speeches have been well received and understood tonight, and I thank you for them. I just want to go over some history. Sorry about this, to Councillor Burgess Joyce. Well, a few years ago, we went through a process where the local plan appeared to be being discredited because of things that had happened. But Councillor Leach rescued it, and I paid tribute to Councillor Leach for all work on that when she was with us as a councillor. I hope word gets back to her that this is her legacy. I also want to thank Councillor Tony Jones because of his vision for doing sorting Burke and Head out. It's not just about regenerating Burke and Head, it's all those other areas that need attention that are covered in local plans and master plans in that document. And just to worry you about history, in the early 60s I was taking a look at planning and I often joked to Keith Keeley that I have my copy of a document produced by the Ministry of Housing and Local Government in 1962-1970 called Families Living at High Density. And I also have a copy I bought in 1968, I think it was 68, which cost me the princely sum of three shillings about residential areas and higher densities. But this is history repeating itself, Mr Mayor. You might remember open old gardens and the mistakes that were made by predecessor authorities. Things that were built, difficult to heat, poor insulation, were discredited and had to be pulled down. We have learned from our past mistakes. We have learned 
about the need for proper design. We need the right designs in the right place. But with that, Mr. Mayor, has to come the infrastructure. And if I look at the Bromley area, there were something like 1,700 homes being proposed on sites down there, all Brownsville sites, but they will need the infrastructure. And our folks with the health service are at work to try and get the numbers right for our schools, a key to this success of the document. And now we've heard about some of the developers. Tonight, we have a chance to pass a document that becomes a material consideration. So technically, once we've got it, it is there to point out. And when we point at it, we can tell the developers that we now have a plan. We can point at it that no matter how much they spend on their own experts, how much they spend on their own planners, their own solicitors, their own architects, anyone they can drag behind them, we have a plan and we will resist what they're trying to do because we love every stick and stone of this borough and that's what we're doing from tonight. We've plugged the loopholes that they've exploded. We have a plan and I wish you every success. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Kelly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it starts off, obviously, by thanking, uh, by congratulating Councillor Booth on his main speech, which I, which I enjoyed, particularly the part that served to uh, make Steve Fouts feel um, old. <laughs> that, that was until Councillor Gilchrist, of course, made his speech and brought out documents from the early 60s, which uh, which uh, only served to make me feel um, old. So, so we took that as a tour. Took that as a tour. Mr. Mayor, can I um, take this opportunity also to thank you uh, for um, taking the germ of the idea on the on how we, as a council, can recognise the importance of the environment and, and for agreeing. To, uh, to put Andy Cockrell's name to that. I think, I think it is important to us. Uh, Councillor Burke's choice refers to uh, what a smashing place it is, and it's because of the environment that we live in. Um, and members uh, have referred clearly to the Green Belt. Other members, uh, Councillor Fouch and Councillor Lewis, uh, quite rightly refer to the importance of non-Green Belt land, uh, urban green space to the east of the, uh, of the borough. Uh, which, in, in, again, I represent a ward with no stick of, of not bladed grass, green belt grass um, within it. Um, so uh, it's those urban green space um, places that, uh, that are important to, uh, to my uh, members, uh, to my constituents. Can I also join those who have uh, paid particular um, uh, comment to, uh, to the singular contribution of Elisa Leach during her period here? And again, without getting too, um, uh, too political on it or, or too historic, we must remember that when the LGAP review came and suggested we set up the working group, they suggested to us that it should be chaired and led by an independent member. But across the parties, we all agreed that the leadership was, uh, could be given adequately and with our confidence <coughs> by, uh, by Anita uh, taking that forward. And she certainly, uh, she certainly did have the opportunity to take it. Uh, I'm not sure that's a, that's a comment on what I'm saying. Here, but uh, 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 I'll, uh, a couple of members, I think, uh, I think it's a care for it. Councillor Kelly referred to the, uh, uh, the inspection report, effectively the public inquiry in front of planning inspector. And I've often had good things to say about planning inspector. Not that often, but it uh, depends what decision you make. And I, I accept there will be a degree of nervousness about that process. But I've seen that a number of members have printed off the local plan as it uh, sits, and it is a weighty tome of many hundreds of pages. But what sits behind this, uh, Mr. Mayor, is an evidence base, the likes of which can only really be viewed online. If you printed that off, the pile would be massive, I and mean, that's the work that officers have done behind the scenes that supports what it says in the uh, local plan and gives me confidence, despite the nervousness that must exist uh, with the officers and, and, and with a number of members, what will happen at public inquiry. It's the depth and the, uh, the amount of work that has gone into that evidence base that gives me confidence that it will be, that what goes into that process 
will also be what uh, uh, comes out of it. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, in conclusion, um, I will uh, yes lend my thanks again to the work, particularly the officers have done in bringing this uh, plan uh, forward for agreement tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, I too congratulate Councillor Marston and Councillor Booth on excellent uh, Nathan speeches, um, and also uh, echo the praise that's been uh, lavished on uh, Anissa Leach. Uh, she drove this, this project forward, and uh, also to our hard-working officer staff who have put in an incalculable amount of time in, in preparing this plan. Um, but I, and I think this is something that is going to genuinely get all party, cross party support tonight. Um, I just want to sound a, a little word of warning though. We have not got a local plan, we have got a draft local plan and there are still further hurdles to be overcome. And all members here have been sent a, a, a lavish brochure by a developer who's got the eyes on developing seven, I think it is, sites across the centre of Wirral, which are all currently within the green belt. And let's not fool ourselves, that developer will not be alone. There'll be others eyeing up some of our green spaces and wanting to develop them. Uh, as Councillor Kelly has just said, we have got a very impressive evidence base which, which will Able, enable us to defend the decision that we are taking because we all agree green belt must be preserved brownfield sites uh, are where we're going to put the development and i'd like to finish just by thanking the numerous residents groups and community groups who have lobbied us so hard in defense of our green belt and a plea to them that they may well not have quite won the battle yet. We've got to keep our eye on these potential developers and we may have to gird up our loins once again to see that we do keep those precious green spaces which we all love and value so much. I'm very sorry about this at the back. Um, can someone, can someone please, let's pull it down. Yeah. Oh, he's gone. It's okay. Thank you. Um, right, next one. Where am I up to? Um, yeah, I'll get that in a minute. Um, Jerry Williams, please. First of all, can I congratulate her? Councillor Martin on his maiden speech and very much the moving um, uh, speech of my colleague uh, Tony Cottier. Uh, very much, uh, really, really, uh, you know, very much uh, got me emotional actually, but anyway, thank you. Um, anyway, so it, first of all, it's not surprising that the Conservatives are getting impatient to get the plan, the local plan done with Tory donating developers ready to build top-end luxury properties whenever they can. It's very convenient now for the opposition to use the green belt issue for grandstanding and election leaflet fodder. Mr. Mayor, this is outrageous. Up, he voted however, to pay off developers to, half a million however, pounds it is for up, the golf resort. Oh, oh, come on, give me a it is up to, to, to the Wirral Labour Party who have led. Uh, sorry, it is up to the Wirral Labour Party who have led this brown belt first <laughs> policy. <laughs> we can, in, we can uh, give me, give me a chance. Weakening national planning law has been the principal problem here of many of our green belt woes. A system that has allowed developers to, uh, to employ high-end barristers, and I've personally uh, witnessed this, to run rings around planning inspectors' offices. How can a system that have allowed the likes of uh, Storm, uh, Storm the Ball, historic England, to have an opt-out to build 30 high-priced dwellings in the green belt on the basis of getting a building at risk off their, off their back? The irony here, this was against the wishes of every heritage group on Wirral that allowed this, uh, allowing um, a listed building of importance to suddenly be in the middle of a modern housing estate with no interpretation facilities whatsoever. 
quangos want to listen to the people when it suits them and not when it doesn't. Planning law for conservation areas has been seriously weakened. And I know conservation areas will are seriously concerned. These concerns need action to be taken from the national government who have allowed, in my opinion, house building, uh, high-end house building, and basically an environmental disaster. Thank you. Councillor Cleary. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. And uh, yeah, firstly, uh, many congratulations to Paul Max for your uh, maiden speeches. Very, very well done, both of you. Enjoyed both of those. And to Tony for sharing your, your very emotional backstory. Really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, well, I'm thanking people. Can I thank all the people who've worked on this uh, this incredible piece of work? You know, it is a massive piece of work. Uh, it's not just the local plan that's in front of us. It's, as Councillor Kelly referred to, all of the background data, all the background numbers, the incredible amount of hours that officers have put in to achieve this local plan, which I'm sure everybody is going to support. I certainly hope everybody is going to support. It's a fantastic achievement, uh, and particularly the Brownfield First policy uh, for new housing. We've got very challenging housing numbers. Uh, people have already referenced the, the formula that's imposed upon us. Uh, a lot of us don't like it. I'm not sure any of us like it, uh, but it's there, and officers have worked with it, and to achieve a Brownfield First policy with those uh, uh, housing targets is, uh, is, is, a, is a real achievement. Uh, obviously, it's on paper we've achieved it, we have to achieve it uh, in practice, and that's, that's the next, that's the next um, hurdle to, to cross over. Uh, and just a couple of things in that specific regard, because obviously achieving the, uh, the local plan, achieving all our regeneration aims and visions, is what it's all about in terms of changing this borough and changing the future for the people that we represent and addressing the inequalities that the leader referred to right at the, the beginning of the debate. And we heard earlier about uh, the issue of affordable housing and how difficult it is for a lot of people uh, to afford housing. Uh, and I'd ask the question, even if we achieve the numbers in this plan on the brownfield sites, is that going to address that fundamental problem of people who are economically, socially challenged in our borough being able to afford good quality housing. Can we do that without actually getting directly involved in housing provision? Uh, I would raise that question. I think it's a question we need to really take on board and consider seriously uh, in the years ahead. Um, delivery of the plan is, is critical to achieving our environmental targets as well. Uh, it's just 19 years. 2041 is our, is our target date that we've all agreed for world to be, to be net zero carbon. Can we achieve that, building all these houses, and that's a, real, that's a real challenge against the issue of affordability and the new building targets that are for buildings that are net zero carbon ready. So when do we actually convert net zero carbon ready into net zero carbon now? That's something we really have to take seriously and we really have to achieve because building affordable housing is also building housing that doesn't need an awful lot of energy use, that people can live in without consuming lots of energy, that they can live close to the amenities that they need to live the kind of lifestyles that are desperately required for our society and to, uh, to meet our climate emergency goals as well. Thank you, Mayor. Well, you've made your maiden speech, Paul. Now you're up for this one. Good luck. Where you go. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't going to speak tonight. Um, <laughs> Um, so, uh, Councillor Booth, straight back at you. Um, congratulations on your maiden speech and thank you everyone for the kind words that I've heard so far. Um, I think it's right that people tell us when we're doing things well and of course when we are doing things badly. It's our residents that elect us and it's down to them. Uh, it's down to us to represent them in the best way that we can. So it wouldn't be appropriate for me to speak about things that have gone on in the past given that I'm a relatively new councillor so I'll sort of start from May onwards if I can be so indulged. I think it's been an incredible effort from um, a number of people and I'd like to place on record my thanks to Anita Leach, uh, my work colleague, Councillor Tony Jones, uh, Jeanette Williamson 
Um, and then the officers, Alan Evans, Keith Keeley, Hannah Austin, and plenty of others. Uh, we should be welcoming the protection of our green belts. We should be welcoming the creation of jobs that will come with the delivery of this local plan. Um, community wealth building is a term that's coined by so many people of various political persuasions. But Jeanette is very much leading the way on turning this into a real work in progress from the slogan, it often is. Um, I'd like to agree with Councillor Baird on her comments regarding affordable housing and its very definition. Uh, during our time on the Housing Committee together, uh, it was heartening to hear Joe, as well as Councillor Ian Lewis, um, all support very vocally the need for the borough to build its own council housing stock and going forward, that's something I'll continue to support and campaign for. This shows in itself that we can work together across parties for one common goal. Um, to echo Councillor Burgess Joyce's comments, we do live in a very beautiful borough. We have opportunities to make it even better whilst creating jobs and supply chains and protecting our green belt simultaneously. So well done everyone and let's get together in support in this and move forward together to deliver a local plan that works for the many, not the few. Thank you. Councillor Collins. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, congratulations to Paul and to Max for your major speeches. Unfortunately, I was delayed, so I didn't hear as well. I will go back and listen. Mr Mayor, um, in 2019, Councillor Stuart Kelly said, Rural Council officers and Labour Cabinet have colluded in a shabby backroom carvel of Greenbelt sites based on what was politically uh, advantageous to the Labour group. Let's not, remember, let's not forget why we're here. They lost their majority in 2019. We've now got the Cabinet system. We're now be able to work together. But what they wanted to do, or what they did, was they rejected 1,400 houses in the marginal labour held Prenton. They rejected 2,100 houses on the green belt in labour held Babington. They accepted 974 houses on green belt in Morton and Sorgal Massey. They accept building of 1,100 houses in Clatterbridge Ward, 267 in Caldy, 311 in the green belt in Greasby, Pensby, Nearly 2,500. Let's not forget why we're here. We're here to save our green belts. We're here to ensure that any building is done is done in the right place and we're going to keep our green belts. I will be supporting this local plan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Paul Stewart. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, congratulations to Councillor Martin and Councillor Booth. And comments have been made um, about the length of time it's taken to get this local plan to where we are today. 2004 was when we were asked to develop the local plan. And since 2004, we've had multiple forms of leadership and cabinets. Labour, Lib Dems, Tory cabinet members, Labour and Tory leaders. They all failed to produce a local plan. The delay of a local plan is on all parties. The local plan we have here tonight was driven by former Councillor Anita Leach, uh, Councillor Tony Jones and our fantastic officers. And this will be delivered by the Council Leader Jeanette Williamson. As Council Folks have said, that this would not be achieved without areas with no green belt already, like Birkenhead and Seacombe. This plan protects our green belt. With Will having a brownfield first plan, something most people said we couldn't achieve. And I will be supporting this today, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Tony Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I start by thanking my colleagues on their first speech this evening? I'd also like to welcome this draft plan and praise the work done to produce it. This is both a significant and major achievement for this council. A major milestone for Wirral. It's the first spatial plan since the UDP was adopted in the year 2000. In 2019, we pressed the reset button on this plan. The administration coming in was 
and is still committed to getting not only a plan, any type of local plan, but the right plan for Will. This plan not only seeks to safeguard Will's previous and precious green belt, as has been mentioned on numerous times this evening, it's also founded on lifting up areas which, for whatever reason, have been left behind in the borough. And it will be doing it by setting out a comprehensive, pragmatic regeneration plan. By its very nature, it goes on to support the Council's priorities. We've all signed up to these priorities, some of which are health inequalities, driving social regeneration and supporting our most vulnerable folks, irrespective of where they live. And it's something I feel that we should and hopefully will all agree on. It's actually acted as a catalyst bringing us closer together with the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority along with the National Regeneration Agency, Homes England, to secure much needed resources. Along with a better working relationship with a raft of partners demonstrating belief and support in our plan. Please be in no doubt colleagues the the, and members of the council that this is the most critical, and I'll say that again, this is the most critical document that the council has considered in a long time. I would personally urge everyone in this chamber tonight to put aside political differences and get behind the plan with unanimous support this evening. As with this plan, the borough is going to go places. Its future is strong and we are ready to face the challenges that this plan will bring us. Finally, it would be remiss of me not to mention officers and there's been a lot of mention made this evening of the work that's gone into this plan. But officers have led the charge and I'd like to place on, my, uh, place on record my thanks to the regeneration team, other officers, all elected members, but particularly the ERD committee, because without it, <coughs> We wouldn't actually be standing here having this debate this evening. So thanks for your time, members. Thank you, Mr. Ben. Right, we've had 16 speakers and no one indicated, so I'm going to move straight now to the second of the motion. Yes. Councillor Nolan, do you wish to... Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Stuart, I wish you could, because you're not, you're not on the papers. No one's picked you up. Sorry, go on, last one. Okay, th thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, let's congratulate Max Booth on his maiden speech, uh, Paul Martin on his uh, alcohol maiden speech. I would also like to pay tribute to Tony Cotier, probably the most powerful and heartfelt speech I've ever heard in this chamber. Tony, you'll be lost. I lost this council, Bevington, from the Labour Group. And I would also like to congratulate Jill on your award. As this is my final council, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, may I beg your indulgence, I'd like to pay some record of my thanks to all the sports and friendship, uh, for, both from members and officers from across the chamber. Mm -hmm. I'd also wish to thank my board colleagues, fellow Labour Group members and 